Hi, and welcome to this video, and welcome back to my shed. You wouldn't believe it, this morning the mower wouldn't start. Right, so as you can see, I've taken the covers off the mower because you all know how to do that. So there are three things that make the small petrol mowers work. Okay, so you need compression, you need spark, and you need fuel. So where's our problem lie? Well, this particular motor has excellent compression. So every sort of second stroke there, you can you can really feel the you can really feel the compression. So I don't think compression's it. Um, boy, it's windy today. Uh, so I don't think it's compression, uh, so we can eliminate that for now. So turning it over as well, I tried the old brake clean trick in the or starter fluid in the uh, in the carby directly, and nothing. It's dead as a doornail, and this thing normally starts first pull um, every time. So uh, that leaves spark. So spark's made up of a couple of parts, but the easiest one to replace, of course, is the spark plug. So I went out and I bought a, that's only in there loose, so even with compression, right, and it's loose. So I went out, got a new spark plug. Uh, just a word on these. Uh, they do say on the box that they're pre-gapped, but don't trust that. This one looked like it had been dropped. It's supposed to be uh, 0.030, and uh, this one was almost closed. So that was no good at all. So I've had to gap that as well, but that isn't our problem. Now you can get testers like this, where you would put that the plug in the end and you put that in the cable uh, ground it out and this will glow when it gets a spark uh, but that doesn't work either obviously um, so we're left uh, with the coil or whether or not the kill switch is uh, doing it this this uh, wire grounds out here uh, so uh, let's uh, have a look at the coil and what we need to do to test that but the first thing we're going to have to do is get our multimeter going. Uh, I'll find somewhere for that so you can see it. I'll put it on. We'll put it on the diode slash continuity tester and we'll get a couple of alligator clips. And we'll put these together like this. There, and we have a, you know, the, we know our cables are good now and all our testers are good. Uh, on resistance, that's about 0.8 of an ohm, which is not bad. That's pretty close to a short circuit. Right, so we're all set to go now. Let's park back in here for a sec. Now, uh, obviously uh, the kill switch is our first concern. Is this wire shorted to ground? And now there's a simple way to test that without getting all, uh, all convoluted with a multimeter, and that is to just unplug the coil from the kill switch, like that, okay? And then we're gonna spin it up using this tool, which is just a drill with a uh, 24 mil uh, socket in there. Now, just a word of warning with this, okay? Uh, when you speed it up, do it up, speed up slowly, and let it slow down slowly. If you just let go of the trigger, it does that locking and that can bring this to a sudden halt and it'll rip it right out of your hand and that's gonna hurt. Right, so we'll spin it and see if we get a spark. So there's no spark there and that's not plugged in. So that immediately tells us that there's nothing external to the coil that can be causing it uh, to not work. Pretty much at this stage we've eliminated anything on this side. So we know that this coil is probably not the best but we'll have a look at it on the bench. And you see I'll pull that spark plug out before and I've cleaned up the posts but that's something else you may want to consider doing uh, and that's cleaning up these posts here but you can see they're very clean they've been done before. So with that off we know that 
that coil is not working uh, when this is unplugged. But that doesn't mean that this uh, cable isn't bad. It feels okay and looks okay, but it could have uh, burnt through somewhere and be touching the chassis, or it could just have uh, rubbed somewhere and uh, it's gone through and it's grounding on the chassis. And that grounding could have contributed to the problem. We don't know that yet. So the best thing to do is to just double check that this wire uh, isn't actually uh, shorted to ground. So I'll put my multimeter back on here into continuity. Okay. And we'll check this with, a, with the throttle open. So it's away. So all this is ground here. Check that tab, nothing. Check there, nothing. You can see it's uh, open circuit into that tab as well. That's the other end of this wire. So we definitely don't have a short on this wire. We can uh, jiggle it around. There's no beeping there, but it's still working. So we'll call this wire good at this point in time. Right, enough of that. There's a saying in the computer industry amongst the uh, techies like myself that uh, quite often we've been to the top of that red herring slash goose uh, chasing tree and we've carved our names in the very top branch of that uh, tree. And that basically means that you've something's happened, you've misjudged something, mistaken a reading, basically made a mistake early on. Uh, that's sent you down a fault finding path and it's it's all wrong because the first thing you tried uh, was actually incorrect now you can tell from behind me that it's pretty bright and it's been this way for a couple of weeks we have really good weather and i've reviewed the footage of the spark plug tests we did and i cannot see a spark but i know now that there was a spark there, there is a spark there. Uh, even the tester in the bright sunlight didn't notice. But just as a triple check, I uh, decided to do it at night in the shed and I got a vastly different uh, view that I was able to film. It's a really good camera and I settled the, uh, the ISOs and everything to try and bring you the best picture possible, but this time it, uh, it caused an issue. So. Uh, have a look at that footage now. You'll see the uh, the uh, spark tester hooked up and running, and you can see clearly that there's a spark there when it's a little bit uh, darker. And uh, when we go look at the spark plugs, or at least the new spark plug, uh, you can see here that the uh, spark plug is definitely uh, working. So whilst everything from a fault finding uh, perspective was correct and if you had a bad coil you would have just found it okay so when the coil tested all right on the bench i stopped filming so what i'm going to do is show you how to put the coil uh, back on the mower and uh, then we'll uh, put it back together again and we'll go mow the lawns with it uh, tomorrow when it's cooled down a little bit right so uh, this flywheel as you can see uh, magnets on one side and just weights on the counter side opposite side just to keep the rotor in balance so I put the magnets uh, to this side in preparation for putting on the coil but first the specification is ten thousandths right so have an inch that's a feeler gauge so that's that ten thousandths of an inch now, coincidentally enough, most business cards, oh, and for those in metric countries, that ten thousandths is um, 0.25 millimetres, so it's a quarter of a millimetre. All right, so most business cards, that's my dad's old business card, they're about that as well pretty close. I think that one's closer than this one, but most most new business cards are around that. They could use feeling gauge, very difficult to do. All right, so 
let's go through the procedure. Clean off the the uh, mounting uh, posts. That's very important. Turn the magnet side uh, in. So you have to with this. Oops. And you got your uh, your bolts here ready to go. So what you do is you put the, you put your uh, business card or whatever it is that distance thick on in there like that and that's holding it out that distance now you can just put your screws in quite easily no effort right. okay. now it's a good idea to clean off the face of the coil and clean up the rotor as well in case there's any debris uh, that might cause you to be uh, setting an inaccurate gap. Now, don't do these up too tight because you will break them or strip the thread and that's somewhere you don't want to go. Alright, so there's that. So we just turn the coil and there you go. Make sure it's not hitting on anything. You can double check that with a feeler gauge. That's alright. Okay, so we've now set that. Now let me just see with a good round. Oh, see that? I forgot to plug the coil in underneath. Uh, oh, just before that, I'll whip you over to the bench uh, and I'll show you uh, what was wrong with, with the spark plugs and the potential for a problem. So let's say uh, you, uh, you can use a probe like this uh, wire uh, or I, the way I normally do it, I hold onto the, I hold the probe on the tail of the plug, and do my measurements. But uh, I came up with a problem just before. There you go. This is just a, a good trick for you, just as a reminder. That when you're measuring that, that should be from the tip of the spark plug to here, should be open circuit. All right. Well, watch this. Look at that. I'm measuring something. What am I measuring? I've got my finger on here, on the tip, and I'm holding the alligator clip, and I've got my thumb just there on that bit, and I'm making con I'm making uh, contact there. If I take my thumb away, or fingers away carefully, it goes open circuit, and that's because it's measuring my body. So be really careful with that. Okay, so let's test this spark plug correctly. We've got the probe. Now from the probe to ground, or, or the, body of the plug should be open circuit, that's correct it is, uh, but it should be able to measure something at the electrode. Uh -oh. And we're not getting anything there. I suspect that that plug is open circuit. We do the same test with the new plug and test the electrode of the plug. There you go. 20... Oops. So if that... Say 24... There you go, 24K. So there you have it. This plug is open circuit from the electrode uh, to the tip. Uh, this one's 24K. Uh, and uh, so that's good. Don't forget to gap it. Uh, this is uh, 30 thousandths of an inch. Uh, this is a quantum mower. Uh, the quantum mowers that were made after June uh, June 30th, or made from July the 1st, 2011, you gap the same plug to 20 thousandth of an inch. So there's a date, uh, a date code uh, difference. They change something as of that date. So, okay, we know we have a good plug now. This one's toast. Uh, let's go and put it on the mower. Well, there you go. Uh, 
I did show you all the fault finding uh, technique all the way through to a bad coil and in this case it wasn't that it was the spark plug showed you how to measure a spark plug just to check that but obviously if it doesn't flash it doesn't flash but if you're checking your spark plugs either with the plug itself or with a uh, spark plug tester make sure you do it when the light is uh, dim enough or in a dark enough area that you can actually see it if the spark plugs um, going off so uh, with that that's all we have time for uh, today uh, there is another video that's a companion to this one on the uh, spray paint the custom paint job that i did on the uh, shell cover to the lawnmower so keep an eye out for that one that'll be out soon and uh, with that i want you guys to all look after each other take care and be kind to one another and we'll see you on the next episode of tips and tricks Thank <laughs> you.